Metabolism is basically all the chemical reactions that happen in your body to balance energy. In this video, we're gonna discuss some of the most significant factors that affect metabolism, and we'll explore some of the things that we can change about our metabolisms so we can ignore and stop stressing about the things that we cannot change. There's three primary ways that your body uses or burns energy. Number one is resting metabolic rate. That accounts for about 70% of the energy that you burn each day. Resting metabolic rate is any energy that you use sleeping, sitting at a desk, watching TV, ba basic things where you're just kind of sitting around not doing anything that requires a lot of energy. Number two is the thermic effect of food. This one has a very, very minor role in your daily energy expenditure. It counts for five to 10%. So this is all the energy you use to process food. So number three, the rest is accounted for through active energy. This is going to differ from personal to person depending on how often you move, how much exercise you do, if your job requires you to be on your feet all the time. So there's the three, resting metabolic rate, thermic effect of food, and active energy. Oh, so we just have to work out more and eat less? Well, unfortunately it's not that simple because our body is really good at adapting. Our body wants to be in homeostasis. So as we move more, our body releases hormones that tell us we're hungry. Now I'll never say don't exercise or don't move more because these are really essential if you wanna live a long time and you wanna be healthy. But what I am saying is that trying to use movement and exercise to offset your caloric intake is an uphill battle. So let's hone in on resting metabolic rate. It's what affects most of our daily energy expenditure anyway, so let's see what kind of things affect that. Well, a person's sex, genetics, age, and body composition all play into resting metabolic rate, but body composition has the biggest effect. And I'm specifically talking about fat-free mass. So what's fat-free mass? Well, it's all the water, bones, organs, skin, and muscle in your body. And of all the things that we just talked about for resting metabolic rate, what can we actually change? Can't change your genetics, can't change your age, you can change your muscle. And a muscle cell requires more energy just to function than a fat cell. It makes sense, they have two completely different purposes. How can we develop and strengthen and grow our muscles? Resistance training is how you build muscles. I'm getting just blasted in the eyeballs by our wonderful star. Oh, it's so bright. I'm not crying. Resistance training is things like weight training, body weight movements, isometrics, like holding a position for a really long time. If it challenges your muscles to contract or hold a position under load, then it's resistance training. And as you train your muscles under load, they'll get these micro tears and the micro tears will eventually heal. And if you rest properly and you put enough protein into your body, they will adapt, which means they will grow, they will become stronger, and you will change your muscle mass. So if you build stronger muscles through resistance training, stronger muscles are usually larger than weak ones, they have more mass, so this changes your body composition. If you have bigger muscles, when you're sitting watching TV, or you're sleeping, or you're playing Monopoly with your kids, you're burning more calories just by doing those things. Your resting metabolic rate is higher, so you're burning more calories doing those less active things. So by building muscle, you're not only improving your strength, your balance, your bone density, your connective tissue strength, but you're improving your resting metabolic rate. If you want a video breaking down how to build muscle, let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions about metabolism, let's discuss them in the comments. If you want a free full body resistance training workout, check out this video to get started. And if you want to learn some ways to just add more movement into your daily life, check out this video. Subscribe for more health and wellness content as well as some fitness challenges coming in the next few weeks. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.